Hey, what's up, Crank Cycles crew, and welcome back to the channel. Hey, what's up, Crank? Blah. Hey, what's up? Blah. Hey, what's up, Crank Cycles crew, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be going over my personal Yeti SB 160E elect. Damn it. Today we're going to be going over my personal Yeti SB160E electric mountain bike and some of the components that I like to run personally on e-bikes and why they're better for e-bikes and if e-bikes are a great option for you as a bike rider. Let's get started. Okay guys, so let's go over my drivetrain. I decided to go with the XX New Eagle transmission. Uh, this transmission group set is different than the old Axis stuff. Um, as many of you know, the new transmission is hangerless. So there's no derailleur hanger. The derailleur itself actually mounts onto the axle. Um, so that's pretty cool, a little bit more durable. Um, you know, they say it's pretty much impossible to break. Uh, so I guess the real test would be to put this on the e-bike and really test that out. Haven't had any issues yet. Um, so I went with the XX uh, instead of the XO. Um, you know, they have GX transmission, X O transmission, XX transmission, and XXSL. You shouldn't run any XXSL, which stands for super light transmission on e-bikes. Um, it does have a carbon cage um, and just a little bit lighter components that's just not really suited for e-bikes. So if you're gonna do transmission on your e-bike, which I do recommend, I would do XX or XO or the new GX. Um, but this one's pretty cool. Uh, the XX chain is hollow pin, so a little bit lighter. Um, shifting under load with an e-bike is great. It's great to have an e-bike specific drivetrain. Everything else before, you could use stuff on e-bikes, but it really wasn't purely meant to be used with the e-bike. Um, if some of you guys have used the old Axis stuff or the old um, whatever your drivetrain is, whether it's SRAM Shimano, um, it's almost like the shifting under load couldn't keep up with the motor. There was always just large, a large amounts of clunking, always having to change your chains, cassettes, everything wore out a lot faster. So now it's pretty cool to have an e-bike specific drivetrain from SRAM. I'm sure Shimano is working on theirs, they're probably gonna be out soon, but it is nice to not have to worry about replacing components as often. And I do notice it a lot when I'm shifting under power, this thing really works very well. Um, sometimes you might have little delays with the new transmission stuff, that's because it's like smart shifting. It, the more power you put down with these, the faster and better it shifts. So with an e-bike, it really does work wonders. But yeah, that's why I chose the XX transmission. You know, it'll be a good test. Uh, I've had it for like two months, so I'm gonna do like a six month review and see how long the chain cassette lasts. You know, if nothing happens on the derailleur, another cool thing with the derailleur is you can replace a lot of these parts like the skid plates, um, the cage. This one has an aluminum cage, um, so that's pretty cool. The GX has a steel cage, so you never know, the GX might be a little bit stronger with that steel or this aluminum one might work out. Again, there's all replacement parts for this, fully rebuildable, which is super nice. So one of the things that you'll definitely want to run on your e-bike probably is either a downhill casing or a double down uh, tire or just a heavier casing with another brand. I've used um, the non-double downs before and I would just slit tires all the time. So it's nice to have a heavy duty tire. A lot more is going on with uh, the rear wheel, it is a heavier bike. I would say this bike's 50 pounds. So I personally like a double down tire. I'm not a fan of the carbon wheels on the e-bike, on this e-bike at least. Um, you know, these DT ones, I feel like they're a little bit too stiff. I do like a little bit more flex in the wheel. So I probably will be changing the wheel set out to like a DT Swiss EX 511. Um, or their new free ride rim, something like that, just because I do like a little bit more flex when I'm doing like some cutties or some turns, you know, that's where I really feel the stiffness of the, the carbon wheel that I'm really just not a fan of. So I do want to switch that out. Along with having a strong tire, I personally love to run Cush Core in the rear. I don't really need it in the front, but the rear, it does help a lot. It has saved me from not getting too many flats and, um, I actually run the Kushcore XC. It's a bit lighter, so it's been getting the job done and no complaints. And a quick pause from the video, guys. Feel free to check out our new online e-commerce store, CrankCyclesUSA.com. A lot of the components we're showcasing in the video are gonna be available on our online store. Again, CrankCyclesUSA.com, free shipping over $50. And yeah, browse around. So another thing we're gonna go over are the brakes. I have the new Hope Tech 4 V4 brakes. I think they're a very great and reliable brake. They have a really good bite point. You don't even have to bleed them all the time, like one or two good bleeds at first, and then they're kind of really good, set it and forget it. Um, I have 220 rotors front and rear. 
Um, they used to ship this bike with 220 in the front, two, or yeah, 220 in the front, 203 in the rear, but now they're shipping with 220, 220, and I think a lot of brands are hopping on board with that because the bikes are heavier, you kind of need a lot more braking power, so you want a good, reliable brake alongside really big rotors. So I run 220 rotors, front and rear. All right, so talking about suspension setup for a little bit, I like to run faster rebound than normal, especially on an e-bike. It's a bit heavier, so I love to be able to pop and J-hop over things. So I do run a little bit faster rebound in the rear than my other bikes and in the front. Um, again, I do like to just really be able to hop over a lot of things. The bike is pretty planted already, so I dabble with coil on my other bikes, but for this, I didn't really feel like the coil was needed. Again, heavier bike, so it really does stay planted naturally already. That's also why I did want to speed up the rebound a bit not just because I want to be soaked into the travel or just the rocks and everything. I like to do a little bit more aggressive riding. So I do like to be able to, you know, flick the bike around and maneuver it up. So I do like a faster rebound and I do like it a little bit more stiffer, a little bit on the firmer side. So I do run it, also run it ugh, a little bit firmer as well. Let's talk about the cockpit for a little bit. I do love to run one-up components. So I have their one-up e-bike specific carbon handlebar, 35 millimeter rise. Um, it's cool because the cables actually are integrated into the bar as far as the, uh, the DI2 cables that go to the, the little computer mount here. I also run a 50 mil one-up stem. Um, another reason why I love to run up their bars also is because they have a lot of flex with these bars. They have uh, some technology, some oval technology that they've made, uh, which is pretty cool. So under a lot of load, you really start to feel that flex, not crazy amounts, but like enough where you can tell it's a difference. It feels really nice and it does help me with my arm pain or like my wrist pain. So that helps along so I thought I have it complemented with the Ergon GA3s, uh, the small wing. Um, it really hits the pressure point here. Again, I have a lot of wrist problems, so that does help eliminate that. So I am a really big fan of that. I also have a the new Industry 9 headset that I'm testing out. So we're gonna see how long this will last. Um, the regular bearings, they're not the, the higher end bearings, but um, yeah, I mean, so far it's good. Um, one up components EDC tool. And it is a 38, so I th have the uh, threaded top cap. Um, I like that because I can store a little bit more and having one of these is super handy on an e-bike. You never know if you're gonna break a chain. Well, hopefully not with the new transmission. Hopefully that's good, but you never know if you're gonna need the, the tool for anything else. And to go full e or not to go full e, what I mean by that is there's your full power e-bikes, maybe 85 Newton meters of torque. And then there's your mid tier, which is like, I don't know, some companies 50 to 65 or, you know, it really depends on the brand or, you know, the bike brand and what motors they're supplying. But what I mean by is if you're looking for something where you have to put a little bit more power yourself into the e-bike, um, you're looking at like a, a trail lightweight e-bike, you know, maybe like the Pivot Shuttle SL, um, where it's like 140 or 130, you know, anything 130, 140, 150 travel in the front, and maybe that 120 to 140 travel in the rear. Um, you know, this is like your full on e-bike, where it's got like 85 Newton meters of torque, um, a lot more powerful. Again, this bike, it's 170 in the front, and 160 in the rear travel, and it's a lot beefier, so it can handle a lot more. So there are the kind of like those two types of e-bikes. Um, for me personally, I have a lot of other normal bikes or analog bikes, so when I'm on the e-bike, I want the full experience, I want to be plowing, I want to be shuttling up to the top, um, and I feel like a enduro e-bike is the way, um, if you know, for me at least, to have my one and only uh, e-bike while I have my other bikes. If I want to do get like a little bit different of a workout, I'm going to use my other um, analog bikes. Not to say I don't get a workout with this. I use this as a great tool actually for training. I do a lot of enduro races. Um, you know, so I'm not just pedaling and coasting. I'm pedaling with the motor almost constantly besides the downhills depending. Um, so I do get a workout. My heart rate is a, little, a lot more steadier. So I'm not just huffing and puffing. It's a, it's a little bit healthier, I would say. You're not getting into that red zone. So I think it's great. I think it's a great tool to have. And for me personally, the full e-bike is, uh, is perfect. Another thing to mention when having an electric mountain bike is you probably won't want it as your only mountain bike. That is because if something happens to this bike, 
you know, with the motor or electrical wiring, you might be out a bike for a good amount of time, could be a month, could be two months, it really depends because you're kind of at the mercy of the motor manufacturer, not the bike manufacturer. Um, you know, like for example, Yeti, they use a Shimano EP8 motor, so if you have a Shimano problem, you're gonna have to go through Shimano, not Yeti. And I would say right now, it could be a month, two months, who knows, um, with like getting a, a replacement motor or your motor fix. So it might be good to have a normal bike or we'll call normal bikes analog bikes um, as a backup. It goes hand in hand with an e-bike or you just might wanna have two e-bikes. Um, just something to consider. You might not want to just be without a bike for a while. So keep that in mind. And remember guys, e-bikes are very expensive. So you wanna be putting some money aside to be able to purchase one of these. And let me tell you, if this fine fellow can afford an e-bike, he just bought a house, took out a mortgage with his brand new wife, ended up sinking his money into one of these. If he can do it, so can you.